Preparing for a team like Navy with this offense, you've seen it at North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. offense. Scotty saw it both there and in Wyoming with Air Force. Uh, how unique of a challenge is that? It's a real big challenge. You know, it's it's uh, it's had us up late at night and doing a lot more game planning um, and probably taking away a little bit from the developmental side of things we want with some of the younger guys. We're practicing all the developmental things but not getting probably as much time uh, watching and reviewing the developmental tape because there's a new formation we're trying to get everybody aligned to. This is foreign territory. Uh, from what I understand, talking to, to Coach Bratton, Coach Klein and stuff, boy, we haven't faced this in a long time here. And so um, I'm fortunate Van Malone and Buddy Wyatt were at SMU. And those guys face Navy every year. So we have enough familiarity on our staff, but that's great. What we know is great, but it doesn't matter if you don't know it as a, as a player. And so we've just had to go slow, easy steps. That's why it's so important. Last weekend, we got a little bit of work in. And this finals week, I know these kids got, have a lot on their plate, and we're not out there very long from a practice standpoint. But we have to get a lot of stuff done this week because it is very challenging. And if you're not right uh, with everybody's responsibility and eyes and reads, you guys saw it as well as I do. That quarterback's going to run for 400. And so um, it's a big challenge. One of your big issues this year that you brought back up is wrapping up, yep. tackling properly. Mm -hmm. Does that really get your player's attention now? Because if they don't do it, they're in big trouble. Yeah, well, because there's one guy assigned to that. And if he misses the tackle, I can't leave my responsibility or I've already tackled my responsibility. Uh, it's 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 going the distance. So it's still, but you have to make up for some of that with running to the football, with, uh, you know, your, your eyes correct. You know, you know the corners in this defense uh, are essentially in man coverage, but you better have some zone eyes in case something pops because, let's be honest, they're not going to throw it 25 times against us. Uh, that's not been their M.O., but... Uh, um, yeah, everything. Tackling. Our, our biggest concern right now is is getting the scout team to play the play the offense. That's the that's a huge challenge. Yeah, it, it's it looks great right now, but it's slow motion football. That's going to happen so much faster uh, whenever the, the the 31st is. So we're trying right now. Our scout team's doing really good, but the first few days it was didn't look like option football. Now it's starting to. Um, and, and the other thing is the cut block. You know. It's no fun as a defensive tackle. You're playing off of cuts all day long at practice. Well, we're not going to cut you all day at practice. But we've got to be really smart and be able to say, okay, guys, here's where you're going to get cut. We've got to work those drills. Yeah, one more. Have you faced anyone this season that used cut blocks half as much as well? No, no. I would say we use them on our offense yeah. as much as anybody does in, in the Big 12. Specifically with the defense, what has the reaction been to – facing this kind of a matchup? Is it a tough one to get done to fight? No, it's been unbelievable the amount of focus uh, that they've had because I, I think they're excited to learn something, excited to, to see a, a different offense, excited about the challenge uh, of facing the Naval Academy because it's a Naval Academy. And uh, I think our practices have been really, really good. And um, I'm excited because some guys are playing positions they've really never played before because so what's your strong safety? That doesn't mean anything in this, in this defense or the defenses that we're playing, uh, as well as uh, just the fact that um, um, there, there's there's eye discipline and there's responsibility uh, and everybody knows that if if we mess up okay that was who's responsibility so there's a lot of accountability as well was it a big change for you preparing for a bowl after years and years of going straight to the playoffs um, yes it still is I, I'm still trying to piece together some things uh, as far as schedule but you know we were on the road for two weeks which I've never been on the road um, because we've just been going from playoff game to playoff game this week's probably a little bit more of a routine as far as there's finals so we're finding times to practice um, you know and the fact that you're not there's not a culmination at the end of every week there's there's culmination on December 31st so you don't have to be quite as diligent as far as we have to get this done today this done tomorrow uh, I, I'm learning on the run I'm, I'm utilizing resources that I have in the power five level that are head coaches and how do you balance that uh, line between preparing for the future and winning this game during the 
Um, for starters, you owe it to the seniors first. That's the first and foremost thing. You owe it to the seniors to send them out with a with an opportunity to to win the football game by preparing uh, the best you can. Uh, then you owe it to the program uh, to make sure that we continue to develop. And there's not going to be a practice that we don't work on development. So every practice we've had so far, and we've had oh half a dozen or, or so, we've we've dedicated a some substantial time to development um, but had this be con had this been conventional offense maybe we'd spend more time to develop with development but because of the unique uh, offense that we're facing you have no choice but to be able to spend a little bit more time trying to scheme it how do you get the defensive backs to buy in and stay a sound assignment sound against an offense like this? Uh, one, we've got really mature defensive backs. I'm excited because uh, Denzel Goolsby uh, is really excited about facing this. Um, Wayne Jones um, is excited. Uh, McPherson's excited. Jonathan Alexander, uh, Brock Monty, Ross Elder, the, the, the core people that uh, are going to be in the mix a lot are excited. The corners, it's tough because you know, you're on an island a lot. And yeah, if you, you get a crack, you got to re replace it. It's not as taxing on those guys mentally as it is the, the linebackers and safeties and and our, you know, those guys. But uh, so uh, I think they're excited about the challenge. There have been some young guys that have flashed to you so far in bowl practice. Tyrone Lewis is going to be a really, really good football player here. Um, and uh, excited for him because it's clicking to him. Um, I think Will Jones is going to be a really good player for us. I'm sp thinking of a couple of defensive guys. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of young defensive linemen that are getting better. Um, and then I, I think all of our running backs, you know, because we're using all those running backs in the development phase, even if they've played like Joe and Jacardier have, but we're using all those guys, and those guys are improving. Uh, injury updates. I know you had some guys kind of banged up. Yeah, uh, I think everybody, maybe I'm missing a name, but I think everybody has practiced. The Joaquins, the, the Maliks um, are all practicing now. You know, we're not going to the ground tackle, so uh, I believe everybody, unless you, unless you, unless somebody else missed that you want to ask about specifically. And just uh, like guys like AJ Parker, I know that yep. you banged up, Justin Hughes, um, are they able to do anything at all? No, Justin's still doing his normal running with um, with our training staff. AJ uh, is, is, I think, running in the pool. I would doubt AJ would play in this game. Maybe he could, but I would. I'm, we're not in a hurry to rush him back. Uh, and he is doing well uh, jogging and stuff, um, but I don't envision him playing. Has having an early signing period, does that force you to change how you prepare for a bowl game because of the the last minute time on the road, or is it would that be pretty typical? That's going to be pretty typical anyway. Uh, the early signing period's just rushed everything. Yeah, I think the bigger thing that it's done is um, forced you into having more official visits during a season. You know, where in the past, if it were a February period, you'd bring some guys in during the season, but the core of your guys you'd bring in the month of January. Now, you, you know, I, I would say, I think, well, I know everybody that, that signed with us came sometime between June uh, and the 1st of December. December. When you met Skyler here in this room, um, kind of reacquainted yourself with them after the North Dakota State signing mm -hmm. and recruiting with them, did you envision that the ride would, would be this good first year? Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's the way you have to envision it. You can't say, well, I, 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 yeah, no, I, I envisioned it uh, being challenging. And you guys know as well as I do, we've had some challenges now. We've had some rough, rough spots. But if you continue to do all the things, and I'm not going to go through all the litany of things we talk about, you, you have a chance to be successful if you keep believing and you keep having great days. And, and our guys have done that. And so I, I felt better about it after I met all the seniors because there were so many of them and they were committed to, hey, we're, we're going to get back to the postseason. All right, getting back to the postseason is one thing. Now how many games can we win? And, you know, it's, it's difficult – it's difficult to win in this league, and you guys know that as well. And, and we had, you know, some really, really tough battles, and we found ways to win games in the fourth quarter, which I hope I hope our young players see that, and it carries us into the future. And how, how would you describe the just relationship, the building relationship with Skyler throughout the year, and how that will foster and continue on? Yeah, I love him. He's a great kid. Um, I love his competitiveness. 
I, I, I love the fact that he's wanting to be great, uh, that he's challenging his teammates to be great, to come with him. He makes everybody around him better. You know, when he's in the game, when he's at practice, everybody's a little bit better um, because he's just got that energy to him. And uh, I, I know that uh, he has a bright, bright future in this game and so excited to, so excited for myself that I get to spend another year with him uh, because he's impacted my life and, and I'm hopefully I've done the same to him. Coach, obviously Navy just played Army pretty recently. Is the timing of that game, how does it, I guess, affect or to have a, a fresh game of film as opposed to other people? Uh, yeah, you watch it and you look at it, but they're so similar to each other. What do they do to each other? You know, it's like you have that rivalry that you pull out all the stops and stuff. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but I just I, I know that they play each other so often that they know each other so well. Um, you know, we were recruiting that whole um, whole day, so we didn't really see the game. We've seen it now on tape. Um, but uh, uh, the one thing that you, you know is they're really aggressive on defense, and that's about the only thing I know with their defense. Defense right now is they're really aggressive in blitz just because mess tells me that because I've been on the other side of the ball so much this last week and a half and offensively it's the challenge of, of being able to defend a great quarterback that uh, um, has their offense running on all cylinders. Have you had any further position changes or looking at anything? Not, not right now. No, we just we're we we are so depleted with pos, uh, by position that we're just you know practicing the guys of the positions that they know and we're evaluating skill set to see okay should we move that kid come in the in the winter. Jacardi Wright got loose in the last game. Is he someone where he's still climbing in respect to the playoffs? Yeah, we expect him to play in the bowl game, but I'm hoping we have a healthier James and a health, healthier Jordan, uh, that those guys deserve the opportunity as seniors. But uh, yeah, Jacardier is in the mix, and, and so is Harry, and um, we, we at least will be better there at the tailback because we'll have a lot more bodies. Running this offense that Navy does is for quarterback. It's kind of an art form, and it's like a dance. Yeah. How good is Malcolm Perry at this? Oh. He's as good as I've seen, and I saw uh, Jarek McKinnon at, at, at Georgia Southern played quarterback that played running back for the Vikes, and I think he's with the 49ers, did this at Georgia Southern as a quarterback, and I think he's better than what, what he was at, at it. And that's saying something because Jarek McKinnon's a 1,000-yard rusher in the NFL, and this kid uh, uh, is uh, Perry's really, really special, talented kid, breaks tackles as quick, as fast, makes the great read. Um, he's playing at a high level. Chris, how, how does Navy utilize, excuse me, utilize the passing game? Do they throw a lot? It'll be more play action verticals and you know get your eyes wrong and slip you past the safeties or slip you past the corners and um, you know that's 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 where the eye discipline with the corners and safeties has to be uh, on point because if you if you're not then you know you, you, and you can't give up a quick death on it you you have to make those guys move the field. Anything else? Yeah. One more last question. Yeah, every team gets banged up during the season, but just a couple words on just how this team was able to bounce back. You talked about the injuries and some of your key guys being out. How were they able to respond? Just next man up. You know, the ability to count on the guy next to you to, to perform at a high level because he's practiced enough. We, you know, that's why we do the double reps so that those guys get as many reps as the starters do. So when their number's called, um, you don't know when that's going to be, but you better be able to uh, to rise up and, and be able to make plays because your teammates are counting on you. And that's something that I'm so impressed with this football team because they don't want to let each other down. And when you have a football team that doesn't want to let each other down, usually good things happen. All right, that was it. Thank you. Thanks, guys.